Ra and Osiris are going to build the Great Pyramid of Giza. It has a simple design. There are eight rows, and in each consecutive row going upward, there is one fewer block. They will take turns filling in blocks until the pyramid is complete. The winner is the person who places the final block. However, they have very specific rules on how they can go about placing blocks. First, you must build left to right and then bottom to top. So the very bottom row must be completely filled in left to right before anyone can start placing blocks on the next row up. And then that row must be fully completed left to right before any other blocks can be placed on the row above it, and so forth. Second, you can only place one or two blocks per turn. And finally, if you place two blocks, they must be in the same row. For example, in the first move of the game, Ra can decide between placing just this first block or placing the first two blocks. The third rule has bite if you're in a situation where all but the last of the blocks are filled in in a particular row. In this case, because if you want to place two blocks, they must be in the same row, you just can't do that here. You can only place one block, and that's going to be to complete the row. You are not allowed to do something like this, where you place the final block of the row and then add another block to the row above it. And like I said, the winner of the game is the person who places the final block. The puzzle is this. If Ra goes first, who wins? Ra or Osiris? Remember, of course, that they're gods, so they will not be making any mistakes as they play. While you're thinking about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. The hint for today comes out of Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, The Complete Textbook. As it turns out, this is going to be an application of backward induction, and is more specifically a complicated variant of the game NIM. Are you ready for the answer? If you've never studied game theory before, you might be tempted to begin your analysis at the very first move of the game. You could try reasoning through what seems like a good idea or what is a bad idea, and then continue that process all the way through the rest of the interaction. In contrast, if you are familiar with game theory, then you might recognize that it'll be a lot easier to begin your analysis at the end of the game and work your way backward. That's the idea of backward induction. It's easier this way because the end game is what ultimately matters. That's what determines who wins and who loses. So we need to know what the advantageous positions are at the end to be able to inform ourselves about what are good or bad moves at the beginning. If we start at the very last possible move of the game, everything except for the final block has been filled in so you would be able to fill this in and guarantee yourself the win. So this is an advantageous position to be in. This is ultimately where everyone wants to end up. If we roll back a single step, we see that this is not a good situation to be in. If there are just two blocks remaining, the rules of the game say that you can only fill in blocks on the current row. You can't go across rows. So there's only one legal move for you to complete here, and that is going to be to finish off that second to last row. But if you do that, your opponent can very easily win by finishing off that top block. So this is a losing position. You want to avoid the situation where you're filling in the second to last block. And to represent that, we're going to shade it in black. Any situation where you fill in one of these black spots will guarantee that you lose the game. If we go back one step further, where everything but the last two rows are completed, we see that this is a winning position for you. That's because you can fill in just a single block. If you do that, you will force your opponent to fill in that black region. And as we just said, if you fill in a black region, 
you lose the game. So you win from this position by filling in just the single block. As a consequence of that, this is a losing position. That's because you're forced to fill in the final block of the third to last row, which then allows your opponent to play just a single block, forces you back into the next black box, and then you're going to lose. So we can shade that in black to represent the fact that now anyone who fills in this block is going to lose the game. Any other situation in this row is a winning position. Here, you can fill in one block and force your opponent to play inside the black box. Or here, you can fill in two blocks and once again force your opponent to play within the black box. So any other position in this third to last row will allow you to win. What about here? Well, we just established that the first person to play in the third to last row will win the game. If you're in a board situation that looks like this, you're forced to complete the final block of this row, which then means your opponent will be the first person to play in the third to last row. So this is a losing position. You do not want to fill in this block. You'll notice that you can avoid filling in that newly created black block from this position by only filling in a single block. And likewise, from here, you could fill in two blocks and force your opponent to be the one who plays the black box. So either of those two positions are going to be winning positions. What about here? Well, now this won't work. If you place one block, your opponent can place two, and that forces you into the black box. And if you play two blocks, your opponent can play one and force you into the black box. So no matter what you do, you are stuck, you are going to be forced into completing the four block row, and therefore you are going to lose. As a result, we'll fill this one in black. Now that you've seen how a few of these rows work, this would be a good place to pause and see if you can work through the rest of the solution of the game if you haven't done that already. What about the row of five? Well, this is an easy win. You don't have a choice. You have to fill in the final block, and that forces your opponent to fill in the next black box. So you're going to win here. What about this situation? Well, now you can fill in two to complete the row and force your opponent into the next black box. So this is also good. Here, however, you're in trouble. If you fill in one, your opponent can fill in two and force the win. If you fill in two, your opponent can fill in one and force the win. Basically, no matter what you do from this position, your opponent is going to be able to complete the row, and if they complete the row of five, they win the game. So we have a black box. The rest of this row is easy to force a win. From here, you can just fill in one block and force your opponent to go into the black box. And you can do the same from this position by filling in two. So either of those two positions is fine. You'll win from here. Because the first person to play in the row of five wins, the last person to play in the row of six loses. So this is going to be a black box. The one next to it is fine because you fill in one and force your opponent to play in the black box. And the one before that is also fine because now you can play two. Either way, you're going to force your opponent to complete the row of six, allow you to be the first person to play in the row of five, and you will win the game from here. But that makes this a losing position. If you play one, your opponent can play two. If you play two, your opponent can play one. And either way, you're forced to complete the row of six, and that will cause you to lose. So this is a black box. The remaining two are going to be fine, however. From here, you play one and force your opponent into the black box. And from here, you play two to force your opponent into the black box. Either way, you're going to win, which then means that the first person to play in the row of six is going to win the game. Unfortunately, that means that if you are the last person to play in the row of seven, you're going to lose. So this is a losing position. The situation next to it is fine, though, because you can play one to force your opponent to be the last of the row of seven. And same with this here, where you can fill in two to force your opponent to be last in the row of seven. Either of those are winning positions. 
but that means that this situation is a losing position. If you fill in one, your opponent can fill in two. If you fill in two, your opponent can fill in one. Either way, you're going to be stuck completing the row of seven, which we have just seen loses you the game. So there's a black box here. Hopefully you're seeing the pattern at this point. This is going to be a winning position because you can just play one. And this is a winning position because now you can play two. But that means that being the first person to play in the row of seven is a losing position because either you play one and your opponent plays two or you play two and your opponent plays one. Either way, you're going to be forced to fill in the next black box and that causes you to lose. So this is a losing position and is going to be shaded in as a result. Okay, we're in the home stretch. You want to be the last person to play in the bottom row to force your opponent to be the first to play in the row of seven. So this is a winning position. Likewise, this is a winning position because you can play two. But this is a losing position. Regardless of whether you play one or two, your opponent will be able to complete the bottom row and that causes you to lose. And so we have a black block here. This works out fine though, because you can just play one and force your opponent into the black box. Same thing here, where now you're playing two instead to force your opponent into the next black box. No matter what you do here, on the other hand, you're in trouble. You play one, your opponent plays two. You play two, your opponent plays one. Either way, you're destined for the next black box. This is a losing position. With only one block filled in at all, this is going to be a winning position because you can just fill in one and force your opponent into the first black box of the game. And if you are at the very freshest part of the game where no moves have been made whatsoever, you can fill in two to force your opponent immediately into the first black box. And thus we have our answer. The first player to move wins. In this case, it's Ra. So Ra is victorious. If you want to try playing this game against a friend, it's going to be difficult for you to memorize what you should be doing all the way through. There are a lot of moving parts here. Fortunately, I do have a way of simplifying that thought process. Just memorize row 5 and row 8. Those are the only two rows where you want to be last to play, with the top row exempted, but the top row is obvious, so you don't have to think about that too much. If you keep that in mind, you're taking a long and complicated game and turning it into seven much simpler subgames, one for each of the rows other than the top. By remembering five and eight, you will know that your goal for those subgames, the games corresponding to a row of five and a row of eight, is to get the last move of that row. For all remaining rows, your goal is to force your opponent into the last move. And from there, you can work through the logic of each of the rows as you go through them. All told, you don't need to memorize too much to be able to guarantee yourself the victory here. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.